uh, we can uh, we can start this session. Then, dear all, welcome to this uh, very interesting session entitled uh, "Production Planning and Control in Industry 4.0: Challenges and uh, Approaches." I'm uh, Vittorio Solina. Uh, I am a PhD student from the University of uh, Calabria in the south of Italy, and uh, I will be the chair for this session in place of uh, Giuseppina Ambrogio. Today we will have uh, five uh, very interesting uh, papers. Uh, between, um, for each paper, uh, we will have uh, between uh, 10 and uh, 13 uh, minutes, because uh, we have five papers and not uh, four. And, uh, but we will have also uh, five additional uh, minutes for uh, questions and I, I hope a fruitful uh, discussion. Then we can start with the, with the first paper. The first paper is entitled A Literature Review and Cluster Analysis of the Aachen Production Planning and Control, Control Model under Industry 4.0. The authors are uh, Jan Philip Hefman, Sven Takenberg, Elio Paduano, and Tilo Gamber. The speaker is uh, the first one, Jan Philip Hefman, from the University of Applied Sciences and Arts. Lemgo, Germany. Then, please, John Philip, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you so much for introducing the session and the first presentation. So I will try to share the screen. Yes. Okay. Perfect. And, uh, as already we said. Yes, we can see it. Perfect. Okay, nice. I'm also really looking forward to the other presentations in the session. I think it fits well. Um, so yeah, let's start. Um, Today we're looking at a literature review and cluster analysis of the Aachen production planning and control model under industry 4.0. And the agenda looks as follows that I will introduce you to the topic quickly. Um, I will present you some related work, what authors said in the past about what we are investigating. And third, um, I will present you the actual literature review and it's an exploratory one. Later you will see what that means for us. And uh, then we outline some future research perspectives within our area and we conclude the presentation. Okay, so um, the objectives of production planning and control are mainly to plan and schedule in advance the production and to assure the realization of the plan. For us, the question is now, how do we do that? How does it look like in the context of Internet of Things and Industry 4.0? And this is basically what we want to ask with our paper. And to investigate this question, we employed the Aachen production planning and control model. This is a model developed by Aachen University, um, which defines production and uh, the planning of production and the control of production with tasks, functions, processes, and how they are related with each other in an architecture. And here we can see core tasks, uh, and cross-sectional tasks. There are also network tasks, but these are for us out of scope. We have to focus to narrow down a little bit our uh, where we concentrate on. And here we can see the tasks, production requirements planning, in-house production planning and control, order management, controlling, data management. And below, you can see the functions that are assignable to those tasks. A function is a requirement to an IT system which has the aim of achieving, accomplishing this task it is assigned to. So process planning is a function to achieve the production requirements planning. And with this in mind, we were able to perform our literature review in a very structured way. So the research objectives we, uh, <clears throat> we defined are the identification of current industry 4.0 approaches for planning and controlling production processes, Second, we wanted to classify these approaches according to the functions of the Aachen production planning and control model. And third, with this in mind, we were able to reveal research and unexplored tasks and functions of the Aachen production planning and control model in the context of Industry 4.0. In the past, some authors stated um, some concepts about this. So, for example, one author said, uh, regarding production planning, uh, it will benefit from low delay and we will uh, ha have high quality and actuality of production data. So we can employ so many smart devices, sensors and so on in our production 
that this will be true. And also they they forecasted that production requirements planning and in-house production planning and control will have short planning horizons, high flexibility through intelligent approaches like multi-agent systems and so on, and we can perform dynamic planning. Also very interesting was another author saying about the job shop problem that there is actually a lack of research in solving this problem in the smart factory flexible job shop type. So um, how do we employ the devices that we that are available to us? How do we leverage all the possibilities through Industry 4.0? And of course, also nowadays, it's very popular to apply machine learning and artificial intelligence in many different areas and also here. Um, in addition with multi-agent systems, they are stated as promising approaches for the future in the context of production. So let's look at the literature review. <clears throat> We considered conference papers and journals published in the period from 2014 to 2019. The databases we used um, were for the English search, for English search terms, Google Scholar, ISI Web of Knowledge, IEEE. And for the German search, also Google Scholar, Bielefeld Academic Search Engine, BASE, which is another German one, and WISO. And when we got our search results, we sorted them not by publication date, instead by relevance. So relevance is always has always been an option that uh, the search engines gave to us, which we could click. And um, this is what we what we used. Then we used as search terms, as search strategies, <clears throat> uh, production or as an operator, manufacturing or uh, shop. And again, as an operator, planning, control, scheduling and industry 4.0 or Internet of Things. We use Industry 4.0 and Internet of Things because we wanted to prevent geographical bias. For example, um, we assumed, okay, Industry 4.0 will probably be used much more in the German area, in German speaking countries or in Europe. Instead, Internet of Things has a very global focus. This is why we incorporated both of these terms. And as I said before, it's an exploratory literature review. That means we conducted two search iterations where we in the first search iteration started with some articles, actually 20 studies we included for a qualitative, qualitative synthesis and we optimize our coding scheme, our uh, search terms and all of the stuff to um, have a better second iteration of searching. And ultimately, we were able to include 48 studies in the qualitative synthesis. And when we had a paper which we wanted to review, we developed a classification scheme to be able to assign it to the Aachen production planning and control model. So here you can see, for example, the task in-house production planning and control and the function job shop planning. We as a team of researchers broke down this function job shop planning into components. We called it components, which describe well the function. So for example, the function job shop planning also includes the component of resource utilization planning or sequence planning. And we looked at our paper at hand and read through it and decided, OK, does it address, for example, sequence planning? If yes, we set a cross um, or resource utilization planning. In this case, this paper would have addressed this compo component. And then um, we computed a score of coherence. For example, in this case, we have three crosses set which um, is, is uh, the same as the strong coherence. And this is how we assigned papers to the Aachen production planning and control model. And now we can look at the results finally. So um, in the period of 2014 to 2019, we can clearly see an uprising trend of uh, published papers in our context. And also by going through all these papers, we could um, write down the technologies that they used, the approaches utilized, the disturbances considered. Since we are in a very dynamic environment nowadays, they always consider some disturbances like rush orders, demand variations and so on. And also we could look at the objectives that they had for their production, for example, resource utilization or reducing the make spend and so on. And all of this we incorporated into one 
cyber physical production planning and control architecture, which we propose in our paper. So you can see also that at the physical resource layer, uh, there are sensor networks utilized, active sensors, microcontrollers, and so on. And also in the papers, the authors always stated some features about their approach. So for example, many said that their approach is real time, enables real time production planning and control, or the approaches were dynamic, autonomous, and so on. All in all, we observed a focus on the in-house production planning and control. So everything that happens within our company that is not um, spread across a supply chain. Okay, and next we performed <clears throat> two cluster analyses. The first one with rank order clustering. And here we asked which components are addressed by which publications and which publications have a very similar set of components that they address. And here we observed three clusters. So cluster A had, for example, the component overview of target stages and actual stages of orders in specific resources and so on. And cluster B was actually a subset of cluster A, but there were many papers within this cluster, so we wanted to have an own one. And this is the result of uh, the rank order clustering. And here we already have uh, areas that are researched, so all other probably not researched so much. And next we also performed spectral clustering. Here we asked which functions are addressed by the publications and um, which publications address a similar set of functions. And here we build up three clusters. And you can see in this picture the average coherence that a publication had with a function. So for example, um, there is one cluster F which has an average coherence of full coherence with job shop planning. And on average, it has a very weak coherence with resource monitoring. Okay, and based on these results, we came up with a little brainstorming more or less of future research perspectives. So what can we do in future? The Aachen production planning and control model describes the activity of planning and controlling a production in a very holistic way. So we had very different areas we could propose. And here I want to give you just three examples. The rest you can read in the paper. For example, data-driven planning, scheduling and control of production in our eyes, in our, um, in our scope has not been researched so much. So um, there were not many approaches um, utilizing the data available for planning and scheduling the, the production. Also, the decision making of human operators was not leveraged so much or um, supported so much in the papers that we reviewed. So um, the question is how to support more decision making of a human in the production. And lastly, the influence of a digital twin on drawing management is also another interesting example. Um, drawing management is one function of the of the model. However, um, we can also use it for controlling our production. What happens if the drawing changes with our production processes? So to conclude, Industry 4.0 gained much popularity in research actually. And um, we perform now an exploratory literature review of 48 relevant papers in two search iterations. We proposed the cyber physical production planning and control architecture and many different relevant technologies, approaches, disturbances, objectives, and so on. And we performed two cluster analysis of our classification. And uh, ultimately we outlined some future research perspective. A limit of our publication is, however, that um, probably the results would be much different when we, ch when we would have chosen different search terms. So in our, set, uh, in our assumption is that the results would be very different. Okay, and that's it. Thank you for your attention, um, for coming to the session, and I'm very open for questions now. Thank you, Jean-Philippe. Very, very nice, very, very interesting uh, presentation. Uh, any questions from the audience? Yes, I, I can see a raised hand from Maria, Maria Anna. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you for the nice presentation, Jan. I was wondering if you did distinguish between the German and the English papers. Like you said, you had 48 papers. 
And I was mm -hmm. wondering how many were in German. Yes, oh, I can't tell you how many actually were in German, not so many, but um, we it was one one set of papers. We didn't distinguish. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. <laughs> Other questions? I have uh, I have uh, one question. Uh, yeah, yeah, so I can see Same Sad. Please, Same. I, I saw uh, I saw the hand, but okay. You can make your question, uh, Same Saad, please. No. Can you hear me now? Okay. Okay. Yes. Yes. yes uh -huh. Good. Please. Good. Right. Thank you very much for the very structured uh, literature review for the topic. Uh, it was really nice laid, laid out and uh, very nice to follow. Uh, just one more question, please, if you could. Have you identified then the future uh, research? What should be then? <clears throat> future research is outlined in the propositions, what could be done in the different areas. But also in our case, we would like to do some more research with different search term combinations uh, and so forth. So we wanted to go into detail in certain areas like job shop planning, job shop problems, and so on. These are actually the areas of research that we want to conduct in more detail. However, there's one chapter also in the paper which gives you many different suggestions of future research perspectives, what could be done, a course of action, and so on. Wonderful. I, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I have just one, uh, just one question. Uh, as researchers, uh, we usually, when we take, when we face a new topic, uh, we mm -hmm. usually begin with a literature review to understand something about uh, that topic. And after this literature review, uh, did you plan to write something about, uh, uh, I don't know, an optimization model to plan the production according to the Industry 4.0 context? Mm -hmm. Okay. What about your future uh, ideas about this topic? Mm -hmm. I, yes. mean, I mean to write something to be included in the future in this uh, review. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, actually, on purpose, I highlighted that uh, the human operator is not supported so much. So in future, I would like, if possible, to investigate more how to support the human operator as a decision maker and to make him more autonomous in oh. an Industry 4.0 environment. Oh, yeah, perfect, perfect. Good idea. Mm -hmm. Other questions from the audience? No? Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Jean-Philippe. Thank you, too. <laughs> Very nice. I think we can introduce the next uh, speaker, the next presentation. The next presentation is uh, Smart Production Planning and Control Technology Readiness Assessment, and the speaker is Ramin Bahadori from the Department of Engineering and Mathematics, Sheffield Allam University, Sheffield, United Kingdom. Please, the floor is yours. Ramin? Can you Can you see my presentation? Oh. Okay, okay, yes, yes. I can hear you and I can see your uh, presentation, your screen. Everything is perfect. Okay. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Rami from Sheffield Hallam University, UK. And today's topic that I'm going to talk about is a smart production planning and control technology readiness assessment. The main objective of this research work is to propose a smart SME technology readiness assessment, SSTRA methodology, to support SMEs to examine their current state of technology readiness toward Industry 4 production planning and control point of view. The rest of the presentation is organized as follows. First, detailed explanation of SSTRA methodology will be outlined. Next, the hierarchical requirement model for the smart production planning and control will be proposed. Later, the application of the SSTRA in a real industrial case study will be presented 
and then the presentation will end with the overall conclusion and future work. Briefly, it can be recognized as an integrated framework based on closely coupling several techniques and methodologies to enabling SMEs to examine the level of technology readiness to implement Industry 4. Implementation of the SSTRA process consists of three main phases, including requirement data correction phase, benchmarking phase, and assessment phase. The SSTRA has been shaped to help assessors to collect available information and data to analyze an SME readiness for implementing Industry 4 in their enterprise. Mapping of the detailed description and classification of the technology of relevance to SME operation via facilitated workshops is the first step of the data collection phase. This allows SME to identify, select, and prioritize key requirements, including main criteria, driver, and technology, to satisfy the market and product needs, enterprise drivers, and technology competitiveness position to analyze an SME readiness for implementing Industry 4 in their enterprise. But the SMEs are very limited from the resource point of view. So they may need to know by investing in which technology, driver, or criteria would help them more to achieve Industry 4. SSTRA also utilizes the analytical hierarchy process for supporting SME to determine the own relative importance of each main criteria, driver, and technologies, which can be decided directly by assigning weight to each criteria. The output of this phase later contributes to the assessment of transition readiness through the assessment phase. In the second phase of SSTRA, each technology has five benchmarks. The values start from 0 to 4, as you can see in this uh, table, corresponding to the technology readiness levels that must be met to complete the level. Each technology is assessed using a five available benchmarks to, in, to indicate progress toward a successful transition to Industry 4. These eight SMEs easily compare their technology readiness to identify their current situation concerning a specific technology. The output of this step is used in the assessment phase to measure the SME transition readiness. In the assessment phase, the assessors benefit the output from the prior phases to evaluate the SME transition readiness. The total readiness score of the company toward Industry 4 can be calculated as follows. The maximum readiness score that the company can achieve is 4, which means the company is in the position of a leader. The minimum score is 0, which represents an outsider company. It should be mentioned that the total readiness score can be any number between 0 and 4. The following classification also can be considered in which the boundary between the outsider with beginner and experience with the leader are logically considered to be narrow. Besides quantitative readiness score, the visual representation can be also be provided to help practitioners in understanding the relative readiness of each main criteria by technology. For example, this figure illustrates the visual depiction of the SME that is 100% ready for the transition to the Industry 4. As you can see here, all technology benchmarks have been obtained and are therefore highlighted in this figure. In this section, as shown in this figure, by carefully examining the literature and expert opinion in this area, the hierarchical requirement model for a smart production planning and control is developed. In today's uncertain and competitive market to address rapid changes in the business environment and customer requirement, the urgency of more responsive production planning is undeniable. By addressing the goal of Industry 4, this system is also very agile and can respond quickly to environmental changes. In dynamic production planning, all main internal and external parties need to participate in the production planning phase. Industry for virtual enterprise provides a collaborative and win-to-win -win environment by implementing horizontal and vertical integration, which allow all 
partner to participate in entire production planning. Decision making, overall production planning, refers to the cognitive process that lead to timely decisions that require many input variables for short-term planning based on real-time production and non-production data. And also, the raw production planning dynamic scheduling capability is required to automatically deal with disruption in the production process that may affect planning. A real-time data management system is a data-based system which track, collect, and analyze and, and protect data from external sources and internal sources in the real time, which is crucial to provide SMEs with highly adaptive and responsive planning, scheduling, and execution system. As part of the real-time data management system, the use of data acquisitions allow SMEs to have the availability of accurate field data in real time from related databases such as supplier, customer, or even shop flow. The real-time data management system also needs to focus on the management and optimization of production planning and control process by analyzing the historical data, discovering patterns, and taking action to deal with issues. Due to using cloud computing widely in the real-time data management system, the need of data security is critical to enhance security in data transfer, data storage, and data lineage. And the next criteria here, autonomous production control through Industry 4 is characterized by decentralized and digitalized production control, which aims to enhance production system performance in which each element of the production can control autonomy and respond quickly to change in dynamic production environment. In such a system, self-optimizing production control is required to constantly renew the current production situation and as a result, the distribution of the jobs on the machine can be optimized at any, at any time. To keep producing a single product profitable under industry for production, automated quality inspection is essential to not only ensure the delivery of best quality product, but also allow customers to access the product quality data at real time. Peer collaboration in the control system is also needed so that components can communicate with peers to jointly help identify and respond to fault. And in this paper, SSTRA was applied in the SME manufacturer in the sanitary wear industry in the form of the case study. The implementation was carried out by the planning of set of meetings and workshops to obtain and analyze the collected data. In total, two meetings and three workshops were held. In the first meeting with company senior managers, the objective of the practice is explained and the project team was formed. Then, in the second meeting with all participants, a solid knowledge base regarding to the SSTRA framework and the matters related to the industry for within the company was created. In the first workshop during the requirement data collection phase, the proposed hierarchical requirement model was provided to the project team as a benchmark to be evaluated. The project team was free to do any modification if necessary to be more compatible with the nature of the company and also its operation. There was no conflict among the project team members that the benchmark model is completely fit with company operation. Subsequently, AHP was used for the ranking the main criteria, drivers, and technologies to reflect the current priorities of the SME. And finally, as you can see here, the output of this phase was documented to be used through the assessment phase. In the second workshop, the technology benchmarking phase was completed using a graphical interface to assess the SME technology readiness position based on technology benchmark. The given score to each technology benchmark was documented, as you can see here, 
and later used as input to the, to the assessment phase to measure the transition readiness. And finally, in the third workshop, based on transmitted output from prior phases, given equation was used by assessor team to calculate the total readiness score. The outcome proved that the total readiness score for the company was 1.08 out of 4, and in this case, the company was classified as beginner. Besides quantitative readiness score, visual representation of metrics data was also provided to help campaign decision makers in understanding the relative readiness of each main criteria by technology. And as a conclusion, in this study, the a smart SME technology readiness assessment methodology was proposed to examine SME level of technology readiness to implement Industry 4 from a smart production planning and control point of view. SSTRA had three phases, a requirement data collection phase, a technology benchmarking phase, and an assessment phase. The feedback collected from the case study revealed the validity and applicability of the method. As a roadmap for the future research, discussion are underway with key industrial collaborators from other sectors for further implementation. Moreover, the proposed tool also would be adopted throughout the end-to-end -end engineering across the entire value chain. Furthermore, the SSTRA can also be aligned with a STAR methodology to provide guiding and justification of investment in industry for transition R&D projects in order to achieve the optimum project portfolio. Thank you. Thank you, Ramin. Very, very nice, very clear uh, presentation. Thanks. Any questions from the from the audience? Questions? No. Uh, okay. I have I have a question. Um, sure. Um, in one of your slides, I saw um, I saw blockchain and a number one. What what do you mean? I, it was uh, uh, quite uh, quick. Then I I didn't yeah. understand. Uh, actually, for the technology to oh. meet the time for the presentation, I missed them. Okay. So regarding your about the blockchain. Yeah, yeah. Ah, a blockchain is one of the technology that uh, can add the trust, security, and decentralization. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Product. Yeah, 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 I know, but what do you mean when you write blockchain and the number one next to the term blockchain? I didn't understand that. Yeah, so uh, so other proposed benchmark consists yes. of the criteria, driver, and technologies. Ah, okay. So in the bottom level of the proposed model is the technology. So uh, actually, we they are the that we with our uh, actually we develop our model with uh, collaboration around more than 50 SME in the UK. So this technology are identified, for example, for the blockchain and also the virtual private network that are required for the data security in the SMEs if they want to move to the industry for. Okay, perfect. And. Uh... Uh, another question. Um, you refer to a real uh, case study, right? To a real life uh, company. Yes. I, I mean, and uh, do you think that uh, um, the approach you proposed is uh, domain dependent or not? We we can apply it also in other sectors, uh, or not? Uh, we all believe that all technology mentioned here in our model is. Uh, Close, not 100%, 99% that any SME is required to meet to transit to the industry for. And uh, our proposed model, model can be considered as a benchmark. And also, uh, I mentioned this one. If, for our case study, as a first, we propose our model to the project team in the, that company, and they are free to, based on the nature of the SME and nature of the operation, do any modification if they think necessary. 
So as a benchmark, it can be used for any SMEs, but they are free to do any modification. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Any other questions from the audience? No? Okay, perfect. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Ramin. Thank you. Nice. Very nice. Very interesting. Thank you so much. Then we can move to the next uh, paper, to the next uh, 30 years of flexible job shop scheduling, a bibliometric uh, study. The authors are Pedro Coelho, Ana Pinto, Samuel Moniz, Cristovao Silva. And the speaker is the first one, Pedro Coelho from uh, Coimbra, Portugal. Please, Pedro, the floor is yours. Oh, thank you. Let me just... Uh, oops. Oh, um, sorry, one one minute. Um, I'm having some issues again with my presentation. Uh, um, what? Um, are you seeing anything? No. Uh, I saw something. You saw something? Yes, yes. Uh, yes, now it's... Uh, are you it's seeing good. the right... Yes. Uh, yes, I can see it. Are you seeing my or the, the big one? I can see, yes, your presentation and the other slides, uh, but okay. don't worry. Oh, sorry, not this one. Things aren't going. Ah, okay. Okay, just one second. Don't worry, don't worry. Okay, this is not it either. So now are you seeing the big one? Uh, now I see, uh, I, okay, okay, okay. Is the big one now? Yes, yes, the big okay, one. Okay, yes. thank you, thank you for your help. Don't worry. Uh, okay, so um, I'm Pedro Coelho, I'm a PhD student in the doctor program of mechanical engineering in the University of Coimbra. So I'm new to the Industry 4.0 community and I'm glad to be here presenting my work titled 30 years of flexible job shop scheduling uh, bibliometric study. So this work had been done under the orientation of my supervisor, Cristóvão Silva, and with the collaboration of Anna Pinto and Samuel Muniz. So in this presentation, I will start with an introduction. Um, I will show you the used methodology and then the results. First, a global analysis, more quantitative, uh, after an analysis based on a conceptual structure. I will finish with some concluding remarks. So the Industry 4.0 production paradigm introduced new, new perspectives in scheduling. So uh, there's the need of an holistic viewpoint, uh, demand online, real time and reactive methodologies. Uh, for some authors, flexible job shop scheduling problem research is one of the bases to tackle these emerging scheduling problems. Um, so let me just try to uh, define the problem for those who don't know. The flexible job shop scheduling problem is a NARD combinatorial optimization problem. It can be presented as a set of jobs consisting in a number of operations to be processed in a given order. So each uh, operation must be processed in a machine from a possible set of machines and there are some restrictions. Each machine can just process one operation at a time and it cannot be interrupted. So the goal is to assign operations to machine and sequencing them so that an objective function is optimized. Uh, well, motivated by the 30th anniversary of the publication of the seminal, the seminal work of Brooker, uh, I look at the problem trying to understand how uh, research in flexible job shop scheduling problem had been evolved over the recent years and I was trying to establish kind of future directions. So the future directions were also for myself because this is part of my PhD work. 
the main question that I was uh, when I thought about the changes that were happened is if it was the research keeping up with the challenges and technologies associated with this new paradigm related with Industry 4.0. So to address this question, uh, we have applied some bibliometric methods and in the way uh, a body of research established, which is, a, well, it was a beginner guide or for, for starting studying the problem. And I think in the end, it ended up to be uh, some, some good body of research for anyone that wants to start studying a job shop, um, flexible job shop scheduling problem. So, uh, our study follows the uh, bibliometric method methodology proposed by Zupik and Carter. Uh, first, we start with the study design. Uh, how, how have the research evolved in the last years was my main goal and if it was kept up with the challenge and technologies of the Industry 4.0. So to choose the bibliometric methods, uh, I've used the descriptive analysis, some co-citation networks, and then I look at the most common used keywords that uh, had been gathered from the Web of Sciences on January. Um, general search by topic was performed using keywords like the keywords were flexible, job, shop, and scheduling. So uh, I chose only articles. I uh, don't use proceedings or uh, reviews. Uh, I choose the one in, in the English and in the end I had 900, 952 articles. Um, that analysis was made using Bibliometrics, an open source software programmed in R, and I also used to sit space. Um, the keywords were pre-processed and uh, I took some plurals and simil similar meaning words were aggregated into a single primary term. So then I used some bar graphs, tables and hysterograph to show my findings. The results of the study are presented in two steps. So the first step presents a descriptive analysis, uh, something more quantitative. And uh, the second step is mainly focused on the conceptual structure. And here I was trying to find uh, some trends and if it shows the evolution of keywords in the last years, seeking to detect uh, uh, some emerging concepts connected with Industry 4.0. So the results underline a significant growth in the last year. The annual number of citations shows uh, an exponential growth and uh, the number of publications also follows this tendency. So despite the 30 years, this field shows no sign of stagnation or decline. Regarding the publication research area, engineer is the most is the area with the most publications, followed by operation management science and computer science. So this was to be expected. But apart from the these publications in the obvious area, publications in the, the environmental science ecology also stand out with 14 articles and all published in the all published in the last five years. So I think this situation may reflect the fact that environment and energy saving concerns are gaining important in society and uh, the, this research is uh, paying attention to those needs. So from the rank of the most relevant countries, it can be seen that China uh, and Iran dominates, uh, at least in the number of publication, all the other countries and China itself uh, it published more than 50% of the collected articles. So what I will do next, I was trying to find out who were the most important uh, authors and uh, an author co-citation co network uh, was used and I was trying to find the most relevant. So in this co-citation network, every time two authors are cited in the same paper, they get an arch between them and to, to quantify the importance of the node that they represent, uh, it had been used uh, a metric uh, between a centrality uh, metric. So the author with the higher metrics are the authors that are connected with more authors, making their work seen as uh, a pivotal uh, work because they can represent sometimes uh, paradigm shifts. Um, to be um, understand which publication these authors own, 
uh, their position here in the rank uh, co-citation network of papers it's used and I'm trying to find the most important documents that they had been published pu pu they had published um, so first uh, I noticed that the most uh, uh, that most of the articles in the rank of the highest between us centrality papers are also the most cited papers so these two relations confirm their influence in the area. Uh, so as relevant as relevant publications in the collection, I think that they are a good start points for researchers new to the field. Uh, another good thing that uh, I found out is like, uh, um, I may give you two, a, a three examples of the works on this list that were not catched by the initial search uh, like uh, Bondi Mart work is one of the authors in the articles of one uh, in one of the articles in our collection, but his top position as an author is due to another article that was not analyzed in the collection because it was not indexed in the web of science. Uh, another example is the work of uh, Mastroli. So uh, I had another uh, Example that uh, an important work that had been catched is the work from Duzere Perez uh, that emerged as a relevant author. However, uh, the article don't have flexible uh, anywhere, neither in the abstract nor in the title, so it was not catched in the first search. And I think that uh, this is an important finding that. Uh, this kind of uh, study was able to catch some important papers that were not catched in the first approach. Well, then uh, just to, to show you how things uh, happened, taking a closer look at the most cited papers but presented in the collection, uh, I have here an historiograph. So in the historiograph, the story begins with the, the, the Brooker paper in the 90s. This was the first document associated with flexible of shop scheduling problem. Um, so, however, in this work, the authors mentioned uh, a job shop uh, problem with multipurpose machines. Uh, after Ulrich uh, purpose uh, proposed the taboo search heuristic to solve and only in 2002, uh, Kassem is the first author that refers to the flexible job shop scheduling problem concept and propose several meteoristics to solve it. Well, and si since then, uh, we assisted to an explosion of research work. So, how does it, these uh, numbers connect it with the concept? So, uh, to reveal the conceptual structure of the problem, the occurrence of author keywords and keyword plus is anal anal analyzed. So the keyword plus are keywords assigned by Web of Science based on the works, the, the words present uh, on the paper. Uh, I, I I start like here a uh, burst uh, detection. So burst, it's a kind of temporal analysis used to find features that have a high intensity over a finite um, duration of periods. So uh, to detect bursts reflected, the, the, the detected burst reflected the use of words such as scheduling and uh, flexible job shop scheduling problem. Those were expected words because they describe the problem and they are commonly used. Uh, in the author, keywords were identifi identified bursts of words connected with solution approaches. So we have a local search and particle swarm optimization to meteoristics that gain relevance in the last years. Um, in the keyword plus were identified, identified bursts of words connected with dependent setup times and power consumption. Once again, we have here the, 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 the issues connected with the energy savings and dependent setup times is one of the extensions of the, the flexible job shop scheduling problem. So to catch the influence of concepts related with this fourth uh, industrial revolution, um, two different time slices were made uh, to the in the rank of the most common used keywords occurrence. So uh, first I look at the first 25 years and then I look at the last five years. I think the period of five years seems reasonable to detect the influence of these new paradigms. 
So this division may look a bit uh, symmetric in time and is asymmetric in time, but more balanced concerning academic production. So globally, 40% of the papers have been published in the last five years. So in line with the burst analysis, the global ranking reveals that flexible job shop scheduling and scheduling are keywords with the highest relevance. And then we have a genetic algorithm. So genetic algorithm is the most common method keyword. This is easily understood once is one of the most versatile metaheuristics used to solve this problem. Uh, then, well, we notice that multi-objective optimization is, is rising. Uh, the presence of energy consumption confirms the trend that research is becoming focused on energy saving issues. Uh, and the emphasis in dynamic scheduling, and uh, there will come, there's also in the list fuzzy processing times, indicates the problem addresses, um, well, the problems are, are looking to real world systems where dynamic scheduling is, it's happening uh, all the time. So regarding general solution methodologies approaches, uh, optimi optimization stands out as simulation goes down uh, with the dispatch with, with dispatching rules. So exact exact methods and metaheuristics overcome heuristics. Uh, so finding the best possible solution is indeed the trend confirmed by the emergency of mixed integer linear program. So I think advances is in computing, powerful hardware, faster solvers, with the effectiveness algorithm make those methods more promising. So in the meteoristic domains, uh, besides genetic algorithm, local search, particle swarm optimization and variable neighborhood search stand out. So although it has a burst, sequence depending setup, setup times goes off the rank and uh, uh, no other words, uh, wor keywords related with flexible job shop uh, scheduling problem extensions are here in the top 20. However, transportation time was on a, one of the most frequent uh, author keywords used in uh, 2019. So the last year's evolution of keywords suggested that the tendency is to focus on more realistic problems, solving them near to optimal uh, with multi-objective solutions using mathematical programming and efficiency, efficient metaheuristics. So these developments are uh, essential to deal with manufacturing system characterized by uh, increased flexibility, productive, productive efficiency and sustainably like the ones that we need to industry 4.0 system. But um, focusing on industry 4.0 system um the word the, the didn't um didn't show up but well that should be expected because industry 4.0 have similar strategic plans all over the world that are associated with the same production paradigm so this lack of global globality can justify its absence from the most common words uh, however their related concepts are transversal and should emerge once in use so the analysis does not expose words closely related with industry 4.0, like uh, decentralized and data-driven scheduling, big data, cyber physical system, digital twins, or smart factories. Well, meanwhile, there's the simulation present and it may be a bridge to the digital twin concept. So there is a development in the same direction as the industry uh, 4.0 paradigm. However, uh, I think a greater convergence, convergence is, is needed. So the use of, I think that the use of these new concepts and technology can profoundly change the way of modeling and solving the problem. So finishing with my conclusions, some concluding remarks. So based on bibliot bibliometric analysis, the most influential authors and most relevant articles are presenting, providing solid basis for future researchers. Energy saving issues are gaining relevance, keeping up the world's global concerns. So the address problems are becoming more complex, reflecting real world systems. The exact methods and meteoristics are taking advantage of technological progress in multi-criteria decision-making solutions. And important concepts related with Industry 
like uh, artificial intelligence or machine machine learning have not yet gained expression so that can be a path to explore in the future and that's all if you have any question i'm pleased to answer it okay thank you pedro very very interesting very very clear any questions from uh, the audience any questions okay i have uh, a couple of questions the first one is uh, um, which software did you use for the co-citation co -citation, uh, network the co-occurrence analysis because uh, in the past for instance i used the uh, vos viewer vos viewer i don't know if you know yes yeah well uh, i crossed to, to be honest i recommend well uh, it has been a nice experience for me to do this work because I'm I I'm looking for a path for I was looking for a path for myself and it was really important about the software uh, that co citation I use SiteSpace uh, to use oh, that I, that network. Uh, it has been nice. Free? Is it free? Uh, yes, or, but uh, yeah. I think for me the biggest experience, uh, the biggest surprise, it had been bibliometrics. Uh, I don't okay. know if you ever cross it because it's supposed to be in R, but then it, it have a kind of a web interface and it's it's quite easy. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. To, to be honest, I use it site space and I tried to kind of, uh, well, sometimes data is not as clean as we want it to be and I try to clean some data yeah. and it was quite, it was a bit harder inside in site space in, and with bibliometrics, it was amazing. I went to Excel, I cleaned data, and I made the analysis again. So I recommend that it's 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 an open yeah. source software. Okay, yeah, yeah, because uh, um, for the keywords, uh, um, we we can have some problems. Uh, for instance, with the with the words with the same roof uh, or uh, other uh, things like this. Okay, yes, yes, and yeah, that, that's. Yeah. Maybe yeah. just to comment, it, it can be one limit because, uh, well, you I have to do that cleaning and I I, yeah. I was the one that doing the process. Let's see. Yeah, perfect. The other question. And uh, yes, uh, as I said to the first speaker, do you think uh, this uh, bibliometric study, this literature review, uh, I mean, could be the starting point to propose uh, a new model for uh, job shop uh, scheduling, a new solution approach? Uh, applied for instance to a real case study do you do you plan something about this well uh, actually i'm a bit skeptic about bibliometric studies because sometimes they are just numbers and they are just things and countries and i have some data that's in the in in the article but i just clean it but i think that they can be a good exercise to highlight some points to research and go further I think yeah, yeah, my, yeah. my second work is presented with you. I think that for because I'm not an expert and I'm not able to do a in-depth review of what is happening, but this can show some points to follow. And I think that's that, that's good. We, you just need to use the software and then you may explore. Yeah, the second one is is uh, related to this uh, to this study. It, it is a consequence of this study, this, the second paper. Uh, you present today yes yeah well because i was looking at it and i i, I start reading and i saw that the problems are becoming more complex and one thing that i was not looking i, I did not it was not it did not emerge that as i was was expecting it was the parallel uh, the parallel processing the, the use of parallel architectures to, to solve those problems yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, because uh, I think there's lots of meteoristics and genetic algorithm standouts, uh, and I think that those I will I will we'll, we'll talk about that. But they, they have a natural parallelism. So I think that uh, people maybe okay. There's Industry 4.0. They are trying to solve their problems, but they are not using all the technology that could kind of helping them solve those problems. That's yeah. then then I. I was. That's why I'm going to the next uh, presentation, and yes. that was. Uh, was yes. Yes. Was uh, any other questions? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, then. 
the speaker is uh, uh, always Pedro Coelho, and the title of the paper is uh, Parallel Meta Heuristics for uh, Shop Scheduling, Enabling Industry 4.0. Please, Pedro. Okay, let me try to... Now I am my problems again. One second. So... <clears throat> Are you seeing the big picture now? Yeah, Are you seeing I can see the, the slide? beautiful landscape. Okay, no. Uh, now uh, no. Yes. Is, is the slice there now? No. Yes. No, not now. Yes. yes. Now, yes. Yes, okay. Okay, so uh, uh, let's go to this uh, other. Thank you for your help. Uh, well, uh, Logan. So I, I'm, I'm Pedro Quell again. And so this is my second presentation. It's titled Parallel Meteoristics for Shop uh, Scheduling and Enabling Industry 4.0. So this work had been made also under the orientation of my supervisor, Cristóvão Silva. Uh, let's start by the outline uh, and the work will be similar to the previous. I will start with an introduction, the motivation of the work. Then I will present some details about the methodology after we'll make an analysis of the literature focused, focused on the parallel architecture, shop configuration, meteoristic and optimization criteria. So, and then I will conclude with some final remarks. So, scheduling, uh, we all know it's a decision making process that deals with the allocation of resources to tasks in a specific sequence and over a given period. Uh, to production, uh, pr the production scheduling is one of the most critical activities in manufacturing and under the context of Industry 4.0 paradigm, it gains a holistic perspective and it should be online, real-time and reactive. So, uh, shop scheduling, that, uh, that's, that, that's an art problem, becomes even more complex and even more hard. Uh, meteoristics are often uh, one of the most used approaches to solve the problem, so they present the potential to solve these harder problems, but they demand substantial computational power. So in my first work, I was expecting to find signs of the use of technologies related to Industry 4.0, like cloud computing to solve these flexible job shop scheduling problems. So this problem is one of the basic problems used to research flexible shop environments uh, under Industry 4.0. So I think that the high performance parallel architecture of cloud computing, for example, could be an opportunity to develop new parallel meteoristics and outperform the sequential ones. So this high performance algorithm would enable the industry 4.0, or at least they would help with part of the, the process of implementing industry 4.0 with the solution techniques needed to deal with their scheduling complexity. So, although extended literature review had been devoted to the topics of Industry 4.0 and scheduling, no review had been conducted to clarify how parallel meteoristics are used in the shop scheduling. So, this clarification would allow to identify trends, uh, significant objective functions and solution methods, and to suggest uh, meaningful directions for further research. So, in this paper, uh, we provide a review of parallel meteoristics applied to shop scheduling and indicate further uh, research potential. So this study may guide researchers toward the, the efficiency implementation of these methods. So we attempt to answer the following research question. How have characterized, what have characterized the most recent studies of parallel meteoristics being used to solve shop scheduling problems? So namely their parallel architectures, shop configuration, meteoristics and optimization criteria. So the, the main goal is to overview the extensions of these approaches in the current literature, exposing gaps and unveil research opportunities. It follows the same methodology as uh, the previous work. Uh, I've used the Web of Science database. The search by topic was perform, performed using the keywords uh, scheduling, uh, parallel, and shop. Uh, so to expose the novelty, uh, only documents published between 2010 and 2020 were considered. Um, the search received uh, the, the search retrieved uh, uh, 1,209 
documents. To reduce this number, only articles in English language were considered, so a total of uh, 563. And then the literature uh, review analysis was followed uh, a two step, a two stage cascade approach. Uh, first, that uh, were selected according to their title and abstract. This uh, step reduced the number of papers to 57. And uh, well, due to the use of parallel in the search, some of the papers were only connected with parallel machine problems. Uh, with this 57, an in-depth analysis uh, was made, the papers were fully, fully read, and the, the collection was reduced to a total of 28 papers. So their characteristics were systematized according to the parallel architecture, shop configuration, meteoristics, and optimization criterion. So the gathering information was organized in a table, and the main results will be presented next. So uh, on computing systems, the parallelism is achieved by architectures based on shared or distributed memory. We, we classify the architectures into distributed, when is a cluster of CPU communicating, communicating through a network, uh, multi-core processors in the case of a lower number of cores uh, processors sharing memory uh, until 16 cores, then many cores processors in the case of a higher number of cores. Uh, one particular case of many cores uh, CPUs is the graphic processing unit. So GPU hardware has a particular architecture and memory management and it's on its own class. So as expected, the earliest studies made use the, the distributed CPU systems and had been progressively changed to multi-core and many-core many systems over time. The leading architectures that we found in the implementations of the meteoristics is multi-core CPU followed, followed by distributed CPU and the GPU. So the hybridization of architecture became an attractive option because shared memory system uh, have some limitations when the, we intend to, to well, the limitations are connected with their scalability, scalability uh, but the hybridization brings a cost because uh, hybridization turns the system more heterogeneous and finding the optimal system configuration that results in the highest performance, it's quite challenging. Uh, some notes about the, the parallel architecture. Most of the algorithms were implemented in low-level general purpose programming language like C or C++. Uh, this low-level low level language allow a better control over memory transferences. Uh, all the works uh, using GPU were using Compute Device Architecture, CUDA, uh, an architecture developed by NVIDIA for their hardware. So uh, the use of CUDA exposed the dominance of NVIDIA on the GPU market. So probably this company may have a crucial role in the parallel architectures, even in the context of Industry 4.0. So although some of the algorithms run on regular desktop, most of them run on scientific grids or on high-end server systems. So systems that are not available on ordinary companies. So none of the works made use of cloud or edge computing technology that supports and are emerging now on, under the context of Industry 4.0. So I think that the implementation of the parallel meteoristics on the cloud should be targeted for further research. Uh, Besides, it's essential to study the quality of the required solution. So spending resources on optimal solutions in dynamic systems, like uh, if things change very fast, it's a waste of time and resources if I find the optimal, because in one hour, two hours, whatever, that one optimal won't be optimal anymore. Uh, so I think it's important to understand what's the need of our problem. And uh, I think that decentralized scheduling may reduce the scheduling complexity. Now, this morning, and uh, we talked about uh, agent, uh, agent modeling, multi-agent, well, maybe that could be a, a good solution to, to, to these questions, kind of. 
and maybe using a network of low cost embedded devices may provide the needed solutions. So concerning the shop consideration, the job shop is the most used. So considering that uh, scheduling environments under industry 4.0 are, are mainly described uh, or are, are described by configurations like hybrid flow shop or flexible uh, job shop, almost 40% of the students of the studies the studies may provide useful insights to the application of the parallel math heuristics under this context. But besides uh, flexibility, uh, Industry 4.0 brings more dynamism. When only one author considers a dynamic model with new arrivals jobs after the scheduling execution time, so this area maybe may need some more studies. Another issue is connected with multi-resource constraints, considered as one of the new uh, scheduling perspectives and they are not considered in any of the papers. So this highlight another critical gap that uh, should be reduced in future research. Uh, so meteoristics uh, can have a sequential process implementation, but they need the, to be fast and efficient. So parallel computing brings the opportunity of performance enhancing by running several tasks of the algorithm in parallel. Uh, here, genetic algorithm and taboo search are the most present meteoristics, and then we have some hybrid algorithm, but most of them have genetic algorithm or taboo search as a base. So, genetic algorithm is the most used meteoristic on shop scheduling. Uh, it's a population based meteoristic, and due to its natural parallelism, it's a suitable candidate for parallel implementation. Uh, genetic algorithm also allow a solution representation, a representation that's beneficial to data parallelism. So that way, uh, this algorithm may take full advantage of the many core architectures. And on taboo search, the most time consuming step is the objective function value calculation. Therefore, it's on this step uh, that the, the algorithm, algorithm parallelization improves the performance of taboo search. So regarding the optimization criteria, uh, most of the sampled papers consider only one criteria. Most of them uh, make spam. Well, well make spam is an essential objective because it's strongly related to resource utilization, so it makes sense. And the other criteria represented are cycle time, also related to resource utilization and tardiness that is crucial to ensure on time delivery to meet customer demands. Uh, the objective criteria are presented only in two papers that consider make spam and uh, energy consumption and consumption and one paper that consider earliness and tardiness. So this B objective optim optimization used simple linear weighted sum approaches to ev evaluate the solutions. So other evaluation processes like uh, uh, Pareto uh, front uh, like parallel Pareto is approach is, is is seen immature by the authors, so maybe some attention should be made to to, to research to the research on the parallelization of the um, calculation of the of of p objective functions. It may have a substantial impact in the reduction of multi objective algorithms runtime. Another issue, taking a closer look at the performance evaluation, uh, we noticed that all papers use literature benchmarks or generated their data. So tackling real world data with these meteoristics may allow fine tuning them and improve their performance. So concluding, this study supports that uh, parallel meteoristics have the potential to solve the required scheduling problems present under industry 4.0 context, but it's essential to extend the work already developed and directions for further research include studying uh, the use of cloud computing and edge computing, uh, shop configuration more flexible, problems more dynamics and with multi-resource constraints, uh, redesigns algorithm to apply tasks and, task and data parallelism, uh, and parallel multi-objective optimization criteria. For last, uh, studies should consider the use of real-world data instances. 
And that's all. Thanks for your attention. If you have any question. OK, thank you, Pedro. Any questions from the audience? OK, uh, I have just one question. As as I said uh, before, um, just uh, do you have in mind uh, a specific um, algorithm? Uh, do, do you prefer genetic algorithms or taboo search or simulated annealing um, in the future? Yes, well, at the moment I'm looking more at genetic algorithms okay. uh, because of the uh, of, of because th there's data parallelism. So I need an algorithm because it's different when you have many cores to try to solve the problem. Instead, well, if you have two cores, they may be, you may give one individual or to, to each one of them. But when you have uh, GPUs, you have so many cores, uh, but that's important that they may be working all at, at once. And so data parallelism may be important to have them attack and do several processes over the same chromosome. So uh, I would like to try. At this moment, I'm I'm learning C++ and uh, okay. CUDA. So uh, and then that will allow me to understand better how have a deep approach and understand the algorithm and then try to improve them and uh, apply them. So this is my goal for my next um, project. OK, perfect, perfect. Other questions from the audience? Last chance because we are closing this, uh, this session. No, no questions. OK, thank you. Thank you, Pedro. Thank you. OK, it was a very interesting uh, session. Then uh, they are all uh, as chair of this very interesting, very important session, I would like your uh, contributions, for your uh, attention. And uh, I think that today we have all uh, learned something new about Industry 4.0, about uh, production planning, scheduling, and uh, and so on. And uh, I, I think we can close. Then enjoy the next session of this uh, beautiful conference at. Uh, 4 p.m. I think yes, and enjoy the next day of this uh, wonderful uh, conference. Then uh, tomorrow, then uh, have a good night and uh, enjoy. I hope to see you uh, also in person in the future. I mean, bye and have a good night. Bye.